Coming up, sharing cabs with strangers? DC cab drivers want to bump up their profits by ride sharing. What do riders think? And life after graduation, American University students meet employers on campus to search for jobs in a troubled economy. District Wire News starts right now. Good evening. I'm Kate Minichino. And I'm Rita Galena. Campus Safety is investigating vandalism inside the bathrooms at Bender Arena. It happened during the Relay for Life march over the weekend. Part of the money raised at the event will go to fix the damaged bathroom. Howie Perlman has more on this story. Students are playing volleyball in Bender Arena today, but on Friday, someone decided to destroy part of the men's bathroom at Relay for Life. Three partitions between toilet seats in the bathroom were taken down. Although Relay for Life raised $24,000, Part of that money may go to paying for repairs. Something does happen, uh, they have to either pay for it or take charge or something. I mean, there has to be, the repercussions are on the group that throws the event. Many Relay for Life participants are disgusted that the act of vandalism occurred. What the vandals did did not in any way relate to what we were trying to do there in Bender Arena. It makes me really angry that someone would vandalize an event that has that's purpose is to find a cure for cancer. Relay for Life's coordinators are planning to send the proceeds from the event to the American Cancer Society. Reporting for District Wire News, this is Howie Perlman. Georgetown students beware. The Georgetown Cuddler may be back in action. This past Wednesday, an intruder entered a house on the 3300 block of Prospect Street. Police believe it may be the same intruder responsible for almost a dozen other incidents. Called the Cuddler by Georgetown students, the suspects entered the home through the unlocked doors and lays in bed with students. The incidents range from the cuddler sleeping in bed with students to covering them with blankets and leaving. No one has been injured, but police fear the crimes might get worse. DC cabbies are asking for law changes that will add more passengers, but will benefit their pockets. Sarah Reddington has more. With the economy trouble, D.C. taxi drivers are also facing cash problems. Since the switch from zone fares, which charge drivers depending on different highlighted areas, to meters, which charge based on distance, cabbies have said they have lost at least a third of their revenue. To help their cash flow, cabbies are asking the D.C. Council to lift the $19 cap on what they can charge for fares and to bring back shared rides, which means taxi drivers can pick up more than one passenger at a time. I feel like the cab drivers have had an injustice as far as making their livelihood is concerned. Uh, there should be shared riding. Uh, uh, I don't know how they're going to do it because uh, with a meter, you know, normally it's pick up one person. But a lot of people are being left out on the corner in the morning because they can't get downtown. Although cabbies want the law to change, allowing more than one passenger in a car at a time has mixed reviews with the taxi riders. I personally wouldn't share a ride with anybody in a taxi, just like for money reasons. They might be trying to scam you and be like, just top out of the cab and leave you there, paying for two people, that one of which you don't know. And also, like, you never know who might be in a cab wandering around D.C., especially at night. No, I mean, I'd probably feel more safe with someone that I don't know as opposed to just being me and the cab driver that I don't know. D.C. taxi drivers testified to the trouble they are facing at a recent D.C. council meeting. They are hoping that the law that created a one fare per person system can be reversed. I'm Sarah Reddington with District Wire News. The Natural Gas Council wrote a letter to Congress today urging them to disregard Obama's tax law changes. As a new tax is being imposed on gas stations, D.C. may be facing tough times in the recession. Gas prices in D.C. have lowered with the national average down from over $3 this time last year. But gas is back in the news. How did D.C. residents handle the gas situation? While prices are cheaper, Amy Shannon is still very careful with where she chooses to drive. Well, um, we, we have you know, made choices to drive farther um, and to go further away. I mean, we, we've I volunteered for field trips, basically, and, and since we get pretty good gas mileage, then I felt a little freer to um, go longer, play, uh, drive longer, and, and be, go farther, actually. Gas stations all over the district may be facing tough times ahead. A new bill passed by the D.C. Council 
will allow the government to tax gas stations. But this may force many to close. According to the Washington Post, D.C. gas stations dwindled from 200 to 108 in the past couple of years. Gas stations like this one behind me may be forced to close soon. People are going to start searching, going to places like Virginia and Maryland to buy the gas from them, and which is going to affect uh, dealerships in D.C. Those who oppose the new tax fear that it will raise gas prices for consumers, which will reduce cash flow to the industry. The Oil and Gas Journal, who opposes the new tax, fears that closing gas stations will eliminate many jobs for Americans. Some people also feel that this plan will go against Obama's initial plan to develop cleaner energy. Speaking of, the Obama administration released details this morning for the public-private investment plan. The government plans to put money into private investment funds as a way to make banks more comfortable in lending. The president plans to buy $1 trillion of troubled assets and mortgages using some of the money from TARP, the Troubled Assets Relief Program. Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner outlined the plan in the Wall Street Journal today. He wrote that the plan will include programs supported by the Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve and will be matched by private investors. Future graduates may want to visit the job and internship fair at American University this Thursday. With more on the event, here's Chung Wu. The Korea Center is having a job and internship fair this Thursday afternoon from 1 to 4 o'clock. There will be over 133 employers coming to American University to share job and internship opportunities. It will be held in Bender Arena in Butler Pavilion Building. <laughs> I'm very interested in job fair to get me an internship or part-time job. And I'm hoping that they're going to have representatives there that would kind of either be from those places or give me names of places that I could look into further. The job fair will cover a wide variety of fields and majors, but with the economic downturn, employers have changed their strategies in recruiting fresh blood. Um, we are seeing a slight decrease in the number of full-time opportunities available. We're seeing an increase in the number of internships, as well as an increase in the number of part-time jobs being recruited for. This is a wonderful opportunity for all the students at American University, and they should all take advantage of it. Each representative will have an information table set up. Students are suggested to bring their resumes, and they can request for position information. This is Chung Wu reporting for District Y News. African Heritage Week begins tonight with an African Jeopardy game in Butler Boardroom. Sponsored by the African Student Organization, the week is full of panels and performances on topics like the ever-changing role of African women, differences in culture and traditions throughout Africa, the changing role of democracy in Africa, and an African cultural fashion show. For more information, contact the African Student Organization. Coming up after the break, how cheap is the world's cheapest car? The Tata Nano goes on sale next month in India, and its price might attract hundreds of potential buyers. But will it ever be on sale here in the United States? And British reality TV show star Jade Goody dies of cervical cancer at just 27 years old. We'll tell you how her death has brought new attention to the importance of pap smears.